Hey guys, Josh here, and in this video I would like to share with you my first thoughts on Shepard's Crossing for the Nintendo Switch. This game is quite unique and hard to compare to other games, so I'll do my best to explain the gameplay loop, what I think about it, and this should hopefully give you a good idea of whether or not this game is for you. But first, what is Shepard's Crossing and how can you get this game right now? So Shepard's Crossing is a series that first started on the PS2 with the first game Shepard's Crossing, which was then ported to the PSP with some improvements. Later on, Shepard's Crossing 2 released for the Nintendo DS. Then on November 10th, 2022, the first game, so the one that was on PS2 and PSP, got ported to the Nintendo Switch in Japan. So right now, the game is only available in Japanese, both digitally and physically. However, an English patch is planned for the future, there's no date for it yet. But whenever it is available, I'll make sure to let you know. So at first glance, Shepard's Crossing might look like your typical farming sim, but it's really not. While in a farming sim like Story of Seasons, the focus is on growing crops and building relationships, in Shepard's Crossing, it's all about trading and hunting. In fact, there is no money in this game. For everything you want to get, you'll have to trade something for it. For example, one of the first things you have to do is to get rabbit fur. So you need a rabbit, obviously, but to get a rabbit, you need a marmot to exchange it for. To get a marmot, you need two pieces of hay, and so that's our starting point. Getting hay is pretty simple. You need to wait until the pasture grass on your farm is long enough, and then you cut it with your sickle, and you leave it out to dry for a few days. Once it's dry, you bring it to the town, and the town in this game is just a menu where you can exchange your hay for a young marmot. You will then have to feed grass seeds to the young marmot and a few days later it will become an adult and will be randomly assigned either male or female. A female marmot can be exchanged for a young rabbit or a male marmot and male marmots on the other hand can be exchanged for meat or if you have two males you can exchange them for one female. So obviously in this case the female marmot is more valuable since you can get a rabbit for it. But you don't have to worry too much about it in the beginning because one of the villagers will actually give you both one male and one female marmot to start with. But this is just to give you an idea of the main gameplay loop of this game. So once you've exchanged a female marmot for a young rabbit you will need to give grass to the rabbit until it becomes an adult. At which point you have to start feeding it cabbage in order for it to produce fur. So now you need cabbage and you can get three cabbage seeds for one marmot meat, which as I just said, it can be obtained from the male marmot. Once you've got your seeds, planting them is pretty straightforward in Shepherd's Crossing. You just throw them on the ground and they will eventually grow by themselves. There is no need to water them, no need to till the soil. You just have to make sure that there's no animal that likes eating seeds around or they will just eat them. Also, sometimes you can have wild animals eating through your stuff, but we'll talk about that a bit later. So once your cabbage is ready, you can exchange it for many things, but in this case, just give it to your rabbit and it will produce fur after a few days. Shave the rabbit, take the fur, and now you can exchange it for a young chicken, buckwheat seeds or wheat seeds. So that's the main idea of the game. You'll make your way up like this by exchanging one thing for another. You will get new types of crops and animals, each with their own diet and requirements. And eventually you'll have a thriving farm with tons of animals. And at the end of the game, you'll have a sheep. It could be hard to keep track of everything in your mind, but luckily the game has some tools to help you. There is a diagram that fills up as you play and it shows you what you need in order to get the next thing. So it's always very useful if you're getting lost. There's also a diary in your house that is filled with information on each item and animal, telling you what they do, what they eat, or anything else you need to know about them. But still, it's a lot of things to keep track of and it's not always simple. The second big aspect of this game is hunting, and to do that, you need a dog. So I managed to grow some cabbage seeds and I exchanged one cabbage for a young terrier, which is one of the multiple breeds of dogs you can get in this game. What I didn't know is that the terrier needs meat in order to become an adult and survive. But at that point, I didn't have any marmot to use for meat, and I didn't want to kill my rabbit who was still producing fur. But the problem is, to get a young marmot, you need two pieces of hay. I only had one left, so I had to wait for my grass to grow. That took a few days. Then I had to leave it to dry. That took a few more days. Then by the time that I got the young marmot to become an adult and ready to be transformed into meat, my dog passed away. So then I tried to get another dog and this time I knew it needed to eat meat. So I made sure to get a few pieces of meat ready in advance and I put them in my storage. But then I ran into another problem. I tried growing cabbages, which is what you need to exchange for a young dog. 
but every single cabbage I tried to grow for two years got eaten by wild animals who were invading my farm multiple times a month. And I couldn't do anything against those wild animals because I didn't have a dog to defend the farm, and I couldn't get a dog because those animals kept eating my cabbage. So that part was extremely frustrating and I probably would have stopped playing if it wasn't for this video. But I persisted and after a few years I finally managed to get a dog. And you're probably thinking, what, a few years? How did you do that? How long did you play? So if you're used to farming games, you're probably thinking that each day would take between 10 to 30 minutes and a year can be dozens and dozens of hours, but a time in Shepherd's Crossing works in a completely different way. There's no proper time, each day can be as short or as long as you wish, you just do all of the things you have to do and once you're done with your day, you press L plus R and it skips to the next day. If you don't have much to do, days can fly super quickly and the year is divided into four seasons, but instead of spring, summer, autumn and winter, they're called dandelion, grape, acorn, and no grass. So dandelion and grape last 30 days each, and acorn and no grass last 20 days each because there isn't as much to do at the end of the year. So anyway, after a few years, I got my dog, and so now I was ready to hunt. Once you have a dog in your dog house, which is like a barn but for dogs, villagers will start asking you to go hunt together from time to time. They tell you what type of animal you're going to hunt, you select up to three dogs you want to bring, and the hunt starts. It's a turn-based battle system, on one side there is your and your friend's dogs, and on the other side the wild animals. As you play you'll get more actions that you can teach your dog, but some of the things you can do pretty early are attack, which is used to lower the wild animal's HP, and your goal, of course, is to bring it to zero. You can also flee, which is useful if your health is getting low. You can go search for animals that are trying to flee, because sometimes they will do that during the battle, and you have to bring them back. You can also wait if you want to skip your turn, or you can collect an animal's corpse once it's dead, which will give you some items like meat after the battle. Each time one of your dogs kills or collects an animal, you will get points, and if it's your friend's dogs that do it, then they get the points. So hunting is kind of like a competition, and you have to try to finish the animals and pick them up before your friend so you have more points, and if you have more points at the end of the battle, you will be able to spend those points on some rewards. If you have less points, you lose, and you won't get to use your points at all. And for me, that's when the game started becoming a bit easier to manage. With those points, you can order useful things like hay and meat, two things that got me into trouble earlier because I didn't have enough of them. But after that, feeding my animals and getting basic products became simpler. Also, you'll get a lot of meat from the animals collected during the hunt, so the resource that was once really scarce now became abundant. And even though at first you'll have to wait for a villager to invite you before you can hunt, if you get more points than them, you will then unlock the ability to initiate that hunt by yourself so you won't have to wait for them and you can just go hunting whenever you want. Another type of reward you can purchase with the points you get from hunting are decoration items. So in this game you can decorate with things like parasols or chairs, but also fences. Fences are actually more than just decorations because they can be used to separate crops and animals, which is necessary because, for example, chickens eat seeds, so to make sure your chickens don't eat the seeds you're trying to grow into crops, you have to separate them. The problem is, the controls are pretty awful. You can see the footage here, but I built this pen for my chickens and my rabbit, and while in most games, something simple like this would have been done in under a minute, this took me six minutes. Six minutes doesn't seem like a lot, but I just placed eight, eight little pieces of fencing and one stone, which acts as a gate for you to go through. It's just so frustrating and not intuitive. To pick up a fence or any decorative item, you need to press X a few times to change your tools until the glove is selected, and then you press Y to pick up the item. You then press B to put it down quickly, or you can hold down B to see a little circle showing you where the item will be placed, and that sounds very useful, but that circle is so hard to control, and it can be hard to tell where the item will be exactly, especially when it's a fence, and you don't want any gap or else your animals will get out. Trust me, it's really not easy to place things where you want them to be in this game. To rotate an item, you need to select it in your toolbar, then press L plus X. And to change the item in your toolbar, you would think you would use the D-pad or something like that, but it's actually L plus Y. For a lot of actions in this game, you have to press L plus something else. And this game is pretty simple in terms of gameplay. You're just picking up items and animals on your farm, you place them down, 
and you use some tools. I'm pretty sure the controller would have enough buttons to handle it without having to do L plus something else every time, and this is even worse when you realize that ZL and ZR are completely unused, which is probably because they didn't exist on the PSP and this is a port from a PSP game. You can actually remap the buttons, so I tried to make things a little bit more intuitive, but you can't even assign anything to ZL and ZR and honestly no matter what you do it just feels uh, clunky. It feels like not a lot of effort was put into making the controls adapted to the Nintendo Switch. So it feels very awkward and it's sad because it could have been easily avoided. So as I was building my fence there were a few items in the way. So to pick up small items you press A which is not the same button as picking up the furniture with the glove. You get used to it, but it's a little bit confusing at first. But also, just like placing furniture, it is so difficult to aim in order to select an item to pick up. You have to be at just the right distance, pretty far actually, and once the item is highlighted, you can pick it up, and if you move just a little bit, it's not gonna work. So it happened to me so many times where I would just pick the wrong items up over and over again, and then drop the wrong items too over and over again, just because the toolbar and the controls were confusing. I have hope that these are all all things that could be corrected with an update, but for now unfortunately I have to say that the controls and item placement are poorly designed and this has negatively affected my experience with this game. But that's pretty much it for what I think so far about Shepard's Crossing. I will keep playing despite the clunky controls because it is such a unique, different take on the farming sim genre and I want to experience more of it. I'm still pretty early in the game, but I love the trading system, which encourages you to have a wide variety of animals and crops in order to make progress. I love the way each animal is different and interesting, and the hunting mechanics are a really innovative way to add combat to the game, all while remaining realistic for a farming sim. But don't jump into this game expecting your typical watering crops, fishing, foraging, or even going to town and interacting with villagers. You will spend the whole game just on your farm, the town is just a menu, and villagers are only seen when progressing in the story or when you hunt together. This game is all about managing your farm, or your ranch as it's mostly animals, making sure everyone stays alive, and slowly trading your way to success. It can also be quite challenging or complicated if you compare it to other farming games, but if that sounds appealing to you and you think you can get over the awkward controls, then maybe you should give it a try. Once again, it's only available in Japanese right now, so I would suggest for most people to wait for the English patch to come out, but if you want to play in Japanese, you should go in with either some basic reading skills or some experience with the original Shepherd's Crossing because you will have to read a lot of item descriptions and little bits of text explaining how to do certain things. This game doesn't play like your typical farming game, so you'll have to learn the mechanics from scratch, so if you cannot read, it will be a bit difficult. But if you're studying Japanese and you're up for a little challenge and an interesting game, then just go for it. I'll probably talk about Shepherd's Crossing a bit more in the future on the channel. I just wanted to share my first impressions after playing it for a few hours, but I'm curious to know what you think. Have you played any of the Shepherd's Crossing games? What did you think? Will you pick this one up? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.